beautiful people. A warm welcome to you all in the Navis Kitchen, Sister Madame Squad. It's a fish dinner today. Yes, we're having fish, red snapper, one of my family's favorites. And I thought I better share the recipe with you all. So here we go. I have this piece of fish and it's smelling like the ocean, fresh and clean. Now, let's begin by washing our hands. And while I'm washing my hands, do me a favor. Click the like button. <laughs> to begin, we're going to trim the fins of the fish. As you know, my fishmonger is very generous and always cleans the fish for me. So the scales have already been removed. So all I need to do is put finishing touches on this fish. And for the tail, I like to maintain its original shape, so I cut a V, just like so. So I trim it off, maintaining that V shape. And that's just for presentation. It looks so pretty that way. See, done. Next step is to score the fish because we have a very special marinade to go with it. Now, the the marinade is no good if it cannot be in integrated into the fish, right? So the way I go about that is make some diagonal incisions and I go super deep until I can actually feel the bone. And you want to use a very sharp knife for this. Makes your job easy and it also prevents the fish from getting bruised. And then I flip the fish the other way and I go in the opposite direction. So you're making sort of an X like that and another one here perfect I'm going to flip it and do the same on the other side done our fish is beautifully scored now let's I'm going to work on the bedding that's going to go underneath the fish while it grills in the oven so I have a red bell pepper one red onion you can use white and I have two jalapeno chilies the vegetable bedding serves a few purposes one it will prevent a delicate fish such as snapper from sticking to the grill pan as it grills in the oven. Two, the aromatic quality of these vegetables will be released into the fish and the fish's aroma will also be released into the vegetables. So there will be that beautiful exchange of flavor. And three, the juices which will be released during grilling will not be burnt. They will not be wasted. And I have selected the following ingredients to season the fish with. Dehydrated lemon rind and fruits, but you may substitute with the fresh or even vinegar. Next, I have some chili flakes, oregano, onion flakes, paprika, smoked paprika, crushed white pepper, granulated garlic and we're going to pulse and blend this together until we have a dry rub consistency and I actually made enough because this is a versatile dry rub so I pour it into my storage container and I take a heaping tablespoon full of it into this other container and I add the following ingredients to it to bring some seasoning I add some salt to taste a little bit of oil to turn this into a sauce and to balance the flavors I add just a small amount of organic honey stir it together and here is our marinade a little bit of the oil goes onto the vegetables because vegetables also enjoy seasoning and the oil is going to help with caramelizing them and they will in turn offer a rusticity in the final presentation that you will adore. 
Now the fish goes onto this bedding and we're going to season that as well. We start with the belly, the head, and then we go into those incisions and then throughout the entire outer layer of the fish. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the process. And if you haven't given me a thumbs up yet, let me humbly remind you to do so. Thank you so much in advance. This is looking good and the oven has been preheating at the broil option which is at 500 degrees Fahrenheit in my oven and I place the fish right there at the very top rack to receive that very important sealing in of the juices. That's going to take 10 minutes and then we'll go and flip the fish and do likewise to the other side. In the meantime, friends, we will be serving the fish when it's done with roasted potatoes and I roast it over at the stove. You will love how I go about it. So keep watching. Now here is the fish after 10 minutes of broiling or you may also use the grill option on your oven. And see that? It is looking amazing. I go in with my fingers but first I dip my fingertips into this ice bath first to make it easy for me and also safe to flip the fish and see how easy it was to flip it and that is also because of the bedding that we created with the vegetables. Back into the oven for 10 further minutes while we continue to prep the potatoes. So the fish has been in the oven for 20 minutes now. We have moved it from the top rack and set it on the middle rack. Now using the baking option to continue grilling for the next 20 further minutes because the fish is huge. It is a four pounder. So it could use that time to cook thoroughly. Now the potatoes have also been cut into the preferred sizes I'm going for, and we're going to roast it over the stove, first starting with a skillet over medium heat. Then proceed by pouring the potatoes into the pan. I like to turn them so that the flatter side has contact with the bottom of the pan and then season with some salt to taste of course and then we're going to also pour some water in here because we need to sort of boil the potatoes or cook them until they are fork tender but we're only going to need a small amount of water the lid is going to generate uh, steam to cook the potatoes through fish is done 20 minutes later it is cooked to the bone and ready to serve all right, now check in on the potatoes. After 10 minutes, it should be nice and fork tender. Sheesh, yes, that's bussing, I love it. All right, so now we're going to start roasting and we need oil for that. So some cooking olive oil and get it all evenly spread out in the pan over the potatoes and then we're also going to add some butter for more flavor because we want these potatoes to be beautifully buttery and now you want to move the butter around while it melts over each potato so each potato receives this incredible buttery treatment 
If you're not a culinarium novice, then you've probably detected that I am using potato fondant style just in the reverse to roast these potatoes. Yes, super easy and so much fun. Now, three minutes after the application of oil and butter, you can tell the flat side has now gained this beautiful golden crust. So I'm flipping them around so the other sides could also gain the same look. Now I have one clove of garlic. I'm going to mince really quickly. I'll do the same with the parsley. And we're almost done, friends. And now we go in with our minced garlic followed by some all-purpose seasoning, which is additional seasoning for the potatoes, so why not? Give it a little shake, shake, and toss, toss here and there. Mm, you hear that sound, it's beautiful. Almost done. Perfect. Now we're going to throw on our parsley, turn the heat off. When we added the garlic, we only cooked under one minute. We just wanted to infuse the garlic flavor into the potatoes that's ready to serve. Fish is also ready, been ready. So here we go. See that rustic presentation I was talking about and all those juices. See how it is sliding off of the grill pan. This is what I meant with that vegetable bedding. You are guaranteed there will be no burning and wastage of these very delicious juices. Final garnish, a sprinkle with some more of the parsley. And the potatoes are ready as well. Uh, another take on fish and chips, if you will. Now take a look at how juicy, how tender this fish turned out. It doesn't get juicier than that, friends. And those veggies maintain their crunch with a slight bit of caramelized treatment. So they are sweetened and they are very tasty. They are very well seasoned. Enjoy, friends. I hope you have learned a thing or two and are inspired to try the recipe. Here is a taste test. Winner, winner, fish and potato dinner. We can also call it fish and chips. It is a take on fish and chips. Now this fish right here, huh, I'm going to challenge you to try it. It's simple, it's easy to put together. Those vegetables maintain their crunch, they're slightly caramelized, so the sweetness is really coming through. The fish itself is nice and savory, and it's also citrusy, just a hint of it. It's just right. And the potatoes, they are crunchy, and they are creamy, and they are also buttery. Oh my gosh, friends. This one is a winner indeed, and I can't wait to serve it to my family. I thank you for joining me today. Make it a great day and have fun, especially in that kitchen. And you all know what time it is. Shop time, yes. <laughs> Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below. And don't forget to share the video as well. Also, watch more videos. It is chop time. And here in Anava's Kitchen, chop time is always yes, friends. So pull up a chair. We are all friends and family here.